Hello everyone. So finally we come up to the point where we have talked about all the different etiologies and now it's time to put everything together and try to figure out how to work up hyponatremia. So there are five steps to diagnose a hyponatremia. The first step is to ask yourself this question, is there something else beside sodium that's causing your hyponatremia? For this, just send serum osmolality. If you're hyponatremic only from low sodium, your serum osmolality will be low, less than 270 milliosmol per liter. However, if there are other osmoles present like glucose, serum osmolality will be high. You can use the correction factor that you learned before to see if there's anything else beside hyperglycemia that's causing hyponatremia. Step two, ask if what is the status of your ADH. And to do this, you check your urine osmolality. If your urine osmolality is low, less than 100 milliosmol per liter, that's a normal response. That means your body is making dilute urine and your kidneys are functioning normally. So you are most likely drinking more water than the solute. This will be seen in psychogenic polydipsia, beer portomania. If your urine osmolality is high, more than 200 milliosmol per liter, that means your body is still making ADH despite low sodium. This can be either inappropriate or appropriate response from a strong baroreceptor reflex. If your ADH is high, try to figure out what your volume status is. And for this, you check your urine sodium and also figure out what does your history and exam suggests you. If your urine sodium is low, less than 10 milliequivalent per liter, most likely you are dealing with hypovolemia and this is an appropriate response because of your baroreceptor reflexes. This would be seen in intravascularly depleted patients, which can be seen in both hypovolemic and hypervolemic hyponatremia. If your urine sodium is normal or high, that means you are euvolemic and there should not be any reason for your body to make ADH. This is seen in SIADH or SIAD. This is also seen in adrenal insufficiency, hypothyroidism and cerebral salt wasting. One of the things you have to note is urine sodium has its limitation, for example diuretic use. So you can use other lab tests like Fe urea or Fe uric acid to figure this thing out. Step four, if your urine sodium is low, try to figure out what your extracellular fluid status is. That means you are looking at, do you have any pitting edema? Do you have ascites? Do you look volume overloaded? And if the answer to this is no, that means you are dealing with true hypovolemic hyponatremia that means patient is dehydrated, volume depleted because of GI or renal loss or skin loss. There may be third spacing or you might be dealing with sepsis. If you have features of volume overload, you are most likely dealing with hypervolumic hyponatremia where you have a lot of ECF volume but low effective circulating volume. And this is seen in patients with heart failure, cirrhosis and nephrotic syndrome. Urine sodium can be low if your patient is consuming very low sodium diet. If there is a recent use of diuretics, it can increase urine sodium. Patients with CKD and AKI may not be able to reabsorb sodium and ADH may not work as well on their distal convoluted tubules. Be vigilant. There can be more than one pathologies at play. For example, you can see a drug-induced SIADH with hypovolemic response. You can see patient with SIADH, with congestive heart failure, etc. Step 5 is for completion. Rule out pseudohyponatremia. For this, make sure that you know how your lab measures your sodium levels. And in case of doubt, check your sodium from ABG machine, which uses direct potentiometry to measure the sodium. Rule out hypocortisolism and hypothyroidism by checking a serum cortisol and TSH. And watch for severe hypokalemia as it can result in hyponatremia. So in summary, step one, check serum osmolality. If it is high, you are possibly dealing with additional osmotic agents besides sodium. If your osmolality is low, check a urine osmolality. If your urine osmolality is low, that means your 
system is working appropriately and you're more likely drinking more water than solute. If your urine osmolality is high, that means you're dealing with high ADH state. So check your urine sodium to figure out your intravascular volume status. If your urine sodium is high or normal, you have possibly SIAD. If your urine sodium is low, that means you're dealing with intravascular volume depletion. And to figure out if you're hypervolumic or hypovolumic, look at your volume status. If you're dealing with AKI, CKD or ESRD, your sodium control mechanisms are likely not working. The sodium levels will depend upon the relative amount of solute or water that you take. So that's overall workup for hyponatremia and try to follow these steps and you should be able to diagnose most of the hyponatremia problems pretty easily. Let's do some examples. So we have a patient with heart failure, EF of 25% comes with alcohol intoxication. He also has a lung mass, sodium is 123. He's taking medications such as SSRIs and TSS and cortisol are normal. He is not on diuretics. His serum osmolality is 265, while urine osmolality is 380, and urine sodium is 5. So what is the cause of hyponatremia? His blood glucose is 300, so this is not enough to explain his hyponatremia, so that's possibly not the correct answer. His urine osmolality is 380, so this guy has some ADH response, so this is not from excess water intake. Next step is to figure out your volume status and his urine sodium is 5, so this is most likely not SAADH. This possibly leads to last two options, dehydration and heart failure, and for this you check the ECF status. Since he has 2 plus pitting edema, most likely he has got heart failure, though you cannot rule out some degree of dehydration in these patients as let's do another example. This patient has sodium of 105 and has been on some diuretic, low sodium diet and diarrhea for three days, low blood pressure. She looks obtended and mouth is dry and has one plus spitting edema. Creatinine is 1.2, glucose is 200, BNP is 5000. Serum osmolality is 232, urine is 450 and urine sodium is 10. So looking at this, your first step is looking at serum osmolality, which is low. So that rules out things like hyperglycemia. His urine osmolality is 450. So that is not psychogenic polydipsia. Since his urine sodium is low and he has been on hydrochlorothiazide and history is suggestive of being more dry, most likely this is not SIADH. This seems to be hypovolemic hyponatremia. However, you cannot rule out some degree of component from heart failure and thyroids. This is a good example of a condition where multiple etiologies are involved. And if you understand the hyponatremia more physiologically, you should be able to tease this out. This is a mix-up question. This is a 48-year-old lady with bipolar disorder on lithium and seroquel, comes with hearing voices and her sodium seems to be 126. She's alert oriented and blood pressure looks okay. There's no edema. The urine osmolality is 96. Here they have not given serum osmolality. However, looking at low urine osmolality, this seems to be an appropriate response to low sodium. So this is most likely polydipsia. So in bottom line, these are the five steps. Check serum osmolality, check urine osmolality, check urine sodium, evaluate your ECF status and rule out causes like hypocortisolism, hypothyroidism, hypokalemia and pseudohyponatremia. Thank you.